Now, Robert L. Dean, I want you to do the official, official, official introduction of this brother right here because you know, you know, you know this one right here is going to bless my soul this morning. So give well, us an official this morning. Well, let, let, let me turn around a little bit, just take a look. I can't believe this is actually happening. Anybody that know me know that this gentleman right here has one of the most distinguished voices in the industry. Uh -huh. and, and I like him because he got that soulful old school rasp, and I do too. And so when I first heard him, I was immediately drawn to his voice. He the um he reminds me of the um Sam Cooks. He reminds me of a little Johnny Gill, a little KC, all those raspy, soulful, anointed powerhouses. This is one of them. The uh -huh. one and only, y'all. The only one, Marcus Cole. Good morning, my brother. Good morning, Robert Earl Dean. Should I call you Red for short? Sure? Should I the, call you Red? Some people do. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, I'm glad to be here. I thank you both for having me on. Yes. Man, man we are excited about having which you on this morning. Say it again. Which one do I which way do I turn? Uh you can look anywhere you want to turn, okay. but uh the camera the camera gonna catch you from here. So okay. you know, you just be okay with it. Let me let me calm down. I'm kind okay. of fidgety. Let me calm down. Okay. okay. For, first of all, I want to start off by saying welcome to the Wake Up Morning Show. Yeah. I'm your boy Dr. L T and you know Red Robert Earl Dean. I wanna say to you that I'm gonna start off with a beef this morning with he, you. He always got a beef. Uh I'm gonna start off with a beef with you. He always first, got one. first of all. A uh, uh, world-renowned singer, yes, Lord. a part of the world-renowned group commission. Yes, uh, but I'm struggling with the fact of how you could look still so young, and Ooh. and got the perfect beard. That's my beef with you this morning, <laughs> brother. You know, I think it's unfair, and you know, and I want I the Lord to know that it. I'm I speaking on it now. Uh oh, he brushing it too. I constantly brush it, man. Keep going. Hey, you know what happened, man? Um. I was I was dying it a few years ago, uh, you know, because we start turning gray when we pass our forties. And um, one time I just let it go, and my daughter saw the pattern. I didn't realize this was the pattern, and my daughter was like, "That's gangster." And if anybody know anything about me, I love all things gangster. So I was like, "All right, you know what? I'll let it grow in." So that's that's the pattern that it grows in. It's kind of it's, it's interesting. All right, all right. Well, you know, the beef is over now. I just and let favor you know, ain't fair anyway. Yeah, I just want to let you know that I did notice. That that you you had the the the, the what they say the main uh, uh, a beard uh, they said that's a man's man you know what I'm saying <laughs> so so brother for, first of all um let let's say what's going on with you right now you know we got Black Lives Matter we got the pandemic going on we got everything happening what's going on with you right now and how are you involved I um I rock steady um. I uh, make sure that I'm not carried away with um, misinformation or disinformation, and they are not the same. Um, one can be a little bit more sinister than the other. Um, in the age of social media, we are always being bombarded with uh, misinformation and disinformation. Um, one of them is, is intentionally wrong. The other disinformation is just somebody's got it wrong. Misinformation is when someone is intentionally sending out wrong information. So whether it be social injustice or this pandemic, I call it a pandemic, it is a matter of which information is right. And this is what you have to do. This is scripture, be still and know. Yes. And that's, that's what I have decided to do. I simply, I be still and know. Uh, the sensationalism of social media is when they show you a six second clip or perhaps a 12 second clip with, with no pretext. Therefore, you have no context. And so you have to draw your own conclusion. It's very dangerous. And so we become emotionally involved when we have no idea of what happened before the moment that mm -hmm. we are watching on mm -hmm. social media. Um, Concerning this COVID, this, this, this whole pandemic that we're dealing with, you know, I'm being smart and I'm keeping myself and my family safe mm -hmm. and we're wearing masks and we're, you know, watching what we do and washing our hands and all that kind of good stuff, just certain things that we're putting in place. Uh, but I'm not carried away with, with hype and, um, you know, the, the things that they want us to get involved in. I'm just not. I simply be still, observe, and I let the Spirit speak to me concerning what it is I'm hearing and, and watching. Well, my question to you, brother, is 
How did you get started in the music business? So it's a very long story. Uh, um, so I grew up in, a, in, in the Church of God in Christ. All right, um, Kojic, Kojic, Kojic. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Hold, hold, Both hold, of us. Hold on. Kojic. Uh, hold on. You, you grew up in the Church of God in Christ. Okay, let me let me do the Church of God in Christ test first. Okay, <laughs> first question. What, what, what is the, the Church of God in Christ song? Um, hold on. This is the church. There you go. Of God in Christ. Boom. You got that one. Right, this right. is the church of God in Christ. Oh, you can't join it. Oh, be born it. Yeah. This is the church of God in Christ. Yeah, okay. Uh, okay, okay. <laughs> so so the next question is so we, we qualify you. Right. What is the church national praise song? <laughs> Uh, yes, Lord. There you go. There you go. Come on through, man. You got it. Yeah. Yes, Lord. That's how you calm everything down. Yeah, think yeah. down. You calm everything down by the simple yes, Lord song. <laughs> and, and, it, and it works. Down. It works. Yeah. It works all over the world. It works every time. Every yeah. Time. Man, he coached it. He coached right. it. <laughs> okay. So back to what you were saying. You passed the test. <laughs> yeah. So I grew up, I grew up in the church of God in Christ. My mother, missionary in the church, um, and uh, we, we were in a singing family. Uh, I'm the youngest of five. So at some point, we had a family group, the Cole, the Cole, I don't know what they used to call it, Cole Singers, whatever. Um, and I didn't join, obviously, until I was maybe four or five. By that time, I was, my, my siblings were older. Um, was inducted into the group. Um, I, 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 at some point, became the lead singer of the group, like little Michael Jackson, I guess. <laughs> And then uh, after that, as my oldest sister got grown and started doing her own thing, everybody else kind of split up. I started just singing locally around. I, I grew up in Saginaw, Michigan, the birth the birthplace of Stevie Wonder. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so um, I started singing locally and started, you know, get, getting some 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 buzz or, around town, a little Marcus Cole type situation. Um, my earliest kind of brush with the music industry, I was probably 13 years old. I was singing at an event um, and the Williams brothers happened to be there. And this is when the oldest brother Leonard was, was alive and still in the group. Mm -hmm. And um, they they heard me sing that night, I'm about 12, 13. And they, they uh, approached my mother and myself and said, hey, listen, we like this kid. We just started a new label. I think it was Blackberry. Yes. And they said, uh, we, we would like to sign him and, you know, I'm a fan of the William Brothers. My father and mother brought me up on Melvin Leonard um, uh, and Doug. And so I was like, absolutely. So, you know, I'm excited. I had already heard of Casey and um, Joe. Not, well, at the time it was Casey and JoJo, but, you know, it was, the, you know, so so I was like, yeah, this is definitely up my alley. I want to do something like this. And so um, we talked, we talked. Things didn't quite work out. At the time, we were we were um, in close communication with Ranch Allen, and we kind of asked him about some advice, like you know, what should we do? And it was with his advice that we that we decided it was probably not the right thing to do at that time. Right. It was nothing against them. It was all right. about entertainment lawyers mm -hmm. and all that kind of stuff. And with his advice, we kind of decided that it probably wasn't the right thing to do. Um, at that point, I had been I had to bug. I had, obviously love singing publicly singing, ministering in church. Um, you think it's ministry, but you don't really know what ministry is until you've lived a little bit. Yes. And um, and so that's what it was for me. I finished high school, continued to write music and all that kind of good stuff. Um, I'm going to fast forward real quick. So in, I think it was 90, 91, uh, a friend of mine, Terrence Hurt, that I went to school with, went to middle school with, um, a phenomenal musician, um, we kind of paired up and started writing music together and working on a project. Uh, a good friend of mine, John Lee and Dave Kelly had a state-of-the-art studio in Flint, Michigan, downtown Flint, Michigan. And so they opened the doors to us, gave us the keys, literally, and allowed us to hone our skills as writers and producers. Um, and it was with this, we, we, we crafted our first project that's actually out, that's still out there now on floating around on social media, not on social media, but on digital platforms called... Um, Swing, I think it was called. Uh, Terrence Hurd and Marcus Cole uh, is, is still out there. And um, very proud of that project, actually. This is where I cut my teeth. And it was from there we started kind of garnering some some respect. We, we got the attention of Fred uh, Tyron Briggs, uh, who was at 
Verity at the time or whoever it was. We, we kind of got their attention. They liked some of the songs that we were doing. Fast forward about a year, I got married, moved to Atlanta. Uh, the Atlanta thing didn't really work out, so we moved back to Michigan. And it was then that I did a showcase for Jive Records. And Mitchell Jones happened to be there with one of his artists, or one or two of his artists. They were R&B artists at the time, really mm -hmm. good. Mm -hmm. And uh, Mitchell approached me, he heard me sing, and uh, I was starstruck because I grew up on the commission yes. farm, knew every commission song, every artist, you name it, I knew that I had the whole database. And Mitch approached me and like, you know, was like, yo, I know you're gonna get signed, man. I just wanna work on your project. I was like, absolutely. Um, it didn't happen. It didn't, nothing happen. Nothing came from that wow. showcase in that regard. However, commission's road manager at the time, uh, uh, Carlos Faison reached out to me and, and Terrence and said that, well, we need a musician. And quiet is kept, Marvin Sapp is leaving the group, so we need a, a new lead singer. Wow. Um, honestly, at that time, because Fred had left, Keith obviously had long been gone, I wasn't pressed to be in the group. Right. So, so in other words, for me, the allure wasn't as strong right. to be in commission because it was post uh, Fred mm -hmm. and, and, and Keith, and those mm -hmm. were my... You know, right. those were some of the bigger pools vocally. Mitchell and Carl, I love their voices, but that wasn't that wasn't my sound. And so I was like, ah, okay, we'll think about it. And uh, I had gotten polarizing kind of opinions about to do it or not to do it. But I had a good friend who was the MD for Gap Band at the time said, don't do it. It's a sinking ship. <laughs> and then others were like, yo, that's a good situation. So... I went to an, uh, um, a concert one night in Grand Rapids, Michigan. My sisters and my wife and I drove up and we went to the concert. They told me to come there and I auditioned. Marvin was there that night and I auditioned. And as they say, the rest was history. I, at that point, it was 96, maybe, um, 96, 97 that I joined the group. Um, and my first gig was uh, New Year's Eve, Radio City Music Hall. Um, wow. that I come on stage and they introduced me as the newest member. Marvin Sapp came over and gave me a big bear hug and said, man, I'm glad you're here. And that was, that was kind of it. Wow. What a yeah. great introduction into the music business yeah. on a national scale. Yeah. Okay. I got, a, I got another beef. Oh, Lord. Okay. I got, got another beef. You, beef. You, you, you said 96 and I'm just feeling, you know, I was like, said, wait a minute. Wasn't that like three years ago? You mean it was all the way in '96? We, we, we just... my first my first project was a uh, time of seasons, and that came out in '99. Oh, so man. I had yeah I had traveled, and uh, my son, as a matter of fact, my son Dorian was three days old when I left him with his mother and and went to the first gig with Commission in New York. That was that was '90 '90. I want to say '98 '98 maybe '98. You know, let me ask you this question. Does it seem like time has sped up and 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 that I still feel like we still in the nineties, but we 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 in twenty twenty. It, it seemed like I blinked and we were here. Well, how's it for you yeah. when it when it comes down to the time? Um it's interesting because you can kind of mark time with accomplishments and kind of things that you've done. Mm -hmm. So I'm looking at my two daughters who are in college. Wow. And, and um, taking them to college, like my youngest, my baby, is in the same college as my, my oldest girl. Mm -hmm. And it's a trip because I don't feel, I guess I don't have a point of reference of what old is or older is. So I don't feel old. But when I look at my kids, my 20, what is it, 23-year-old son, I have older kids uh, from, from uh, before my marriage, but who are 27, 28, yes. And so um, when I look at it, it doesn't make me feel old, uh, but but it gives me definitely a sense of accomplishment that this has all happened. And I've been married for 26 years. So this has all happened in the span of 26 years. So um, that's a good feeling. Well, well, well man, I'm going to do this because um, I don't feel, I feel young and I, I don't see the age, but mm -hmm. my daughter today just turned 30. Wow. So happy birthday, Key. I right. love you. Uh, but birthday. it's amazing that 
our children are growing up right before our eyes. And literally, I remember combing her hair uh, and spraying the water bottle all in her face to get her hair put, pulled back and everything. You know, some of the great times. And now they're the young leaders of today. Now, now tell me about this. Uh, do you only have girls or do you have boys too? No, I have boys and girls. Okay. And so you have two girls in college. Mm -hmm. How is it? When you are they away from you? Or are they in your same city? No, they're away. They're about a, a four and a half hours away um, in New York, and because uh, I'm in Connecticut, so okay. they're, they're in New York. And uh, you know, I think the, the first girl moving away. My son went locally. He decided to go locally, which which is what we wanted for all of them. Um, but for my girl moving away, that was tough because you want to be close to to your baby. Right. And then uh, luckily, because my daughter was accepted into a, a couple of colleges. As a matter of fact right here in Connecticut at Southern. Mm -hmm. And she decided to not go. So she decided to go where her sister is in Syracuse. And I thought, all right, that's, you know, it's easy on me in terms of traveling and the whole thing. So, you know, it, it works, but it, it's tough. It's tough having a semi-empty home, like uh -huh. we're semi-empty nesters, uh, but to not have them around. And so you have to trust the growing process mm -hmm. that everything you taught them, that it'll all come to them, that they'll use it and be safe and be wise and just be good people. So it's, and, you know, it's an adjustment. And, and I'll tell you, it also helps to take the craziest looking picture that you can take surrounded by a whole bunch of guns and say, every time you meet somebody, just show them this crazy picture and say, look, my daddy crazy, so please act right. <laughs> no, they, her, her friends already tell her that I look like a, um, I'm, I'm very intimidating. So uh, I, 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 took a lesson, I took a lesson from my father. I wear shades all the time. And I don't <laughs> smile much. Right. <laughs> now, now, if you weren't singing, what would you be doing? Uh, that's a great question, Robert. Um, I would probably be a hitman. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> if I wasn't singing. And that's a great question, man. Uh, wow. If, if, I, if, if singing wasn't my main thing, I would probably be a, a teacher of some sort, whether it's uh, theology or or, or uh, science. Uh, I love I love things concerning the the human brain, so it would probably be that. And, and and I am, and I do that as well, right? So that would be that would probably be it. So so let me ask you this question: Out of all the songs that you have sung or written, what is your favorite? That's an unfair question, my friend. <laughs> Unfair question. Um, oh, let, then I'm going to rephrase it. My name was write how my about, song. How about this? When you know that you need to move the people at the church because the church seemed a little stiff, what song do you go to? How about that one? Oh, it's not, it's not anything I've written. Okay. Um, my go to is, um, Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus. That's a good one. Him. That's to take in that is where I had I had a, a very uh, interesting uh, occasion where I had Bishop Marvin Winans feed me the words. We were at a state convocation and um, I had to sing before the speaker <laughs> and uh, and I got to the second <laughs> verse and I didn't know it as well. Right. And Bishop Marvin Winans encouraged me to continue and he fed me the words. Trust me, highlight of my life. Oh highlight. God, <laughs> yes. So did, did you see Bishop? <laughs> That's the, the one and the only. Yeah, yeah. Like, absolutely, absolutely. Now, oh. now you have a very distinguished voice. Mm -hmm. what, what 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 does the industry people say about your voice? Because it's so distinguished. Well, what I often get is that is I have a deceptive range, and like as you mentioned, I I am raspy. I wasn't always raspy. If you were to listen to my first project. Um, when I was just a, a wee lad, um, there was no rasp, at least perceptible rasp uh, at that time. Mm -hmm. uh, I had a falsetto because I wanted to do like the Mitchell Jones type stuff. Um, but, you know, what I hear is that because I'm a huge fan of Timberrail, and Timberrail has the exact same um, deceptive rasp, mm -hmm. meaning you would think someone with that much rasp one could not reach those high notes. Correct. Two cannot manipulate runs as easily. Right. And Kim totally defies absolutely all of it. And so uh, I think that's that's probably what I hear most. See, I love voices like Eric Dawkins, who are clean and are quick. Yes. And sometimes I covet 
you know, <laughs> I covet voices like that. But I, I have what I have, so I work with what I got. Amen. So, uh, Robert, can I ask you a famous question? Yes. If you were to be able to have uh, do a concert and you were able to have anybody in the concert, dead or alive, who would be at your concert or performing in your concert? It's your concert, and you're going to set the stage. He stole my question, yeah. but we'll let him have it today. Yeah. Uh, oh, is that for me? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I got some great questions today, brother. Of course, we want you to remember this interview. <laughs> yeah. Um. <laughs> first and foremost, Sam Cook. Yes, sir. Okay. Um, because um, posthumously, he has taught me the art of of singing and spacing and passion. Mm -hmm. I was introduced to him through my my father. He 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 had the records of Soul Stirs and then Sam Cooke's obviously his solo stuff. So I would I would have Sam Cook. Next it would be uh Donnie Hathaway. Yes mm -hmm. sir. Two come on man. Um um once again posthumously taught me I mean tension and release. Um, when you hear things like, um, I studied Donnie for a year listening to him and what it was. Because when I listen to singers, I often, I'm not just thrilled by what they're doing, but I want to know how they're doing it. Yes. Mm -hmm. So I studied Donnie and I realized that what Donnie was doing was he was exhausting notes to the point to where you could feel it in your soul. So in other words, he would go, um, get enough is hard to do when you really yes. love someone and he would shake the end yes. to a point to where you felt it in your bones like yes. good lord yes and so i studied that and so they all kind of connect so next would probably be um oh man rance allen without a question mm -hmm. alive Yes. Um, Marvin Winans. Yes. Alive. Um, and I have so many people because it's eclectic. I love Sting. He's a he's a phenomenal yes. writer. Yes. Uh, because he was formerly a teacher, mm -hmm. and so I love the pictures that he that he that he paints. So yeah. there's just so many so many great um, singers. Uh, Aretha Franklin. Yes. Phenomenal, you know, delivery and passion. Um, so yeah, that's that's kind of my my lineup right there. Well, well let me just say this: I, I want you to add me to your lineup. No, 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 I, no. I, I want you to know that I got a special anointing. I know he's excited, I, I, but no. I, I, I took this from James Cleveland, and and watch. I'm gonna audition for you now. Go, go. Oh, awesome. See, see, see how that. that yeah. see, <laughs> I just want to, just the small critique. You have to prolong your. Thank you. I was thinking the same long. thing, Marcus. There yes. you go. <laughs> See? As to, as to hush the crowd. Right, <laughs> but, but we're going to let him pray and, and stick in his lane. He, he, he always wants to interject the singing. No, sir. <laughs> Robert, Robert. I heard, I heard him singing a minute ago. It, it seemed to be pretty, uh, he, he was pretty good. Had a pretty good well, it's, 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 it's when the spirit hits, because one thing people have to know is when the anointing is there, it's easy <laughs> to maneuver into it. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Yes. Yes. Anointing makes it easy, doesn't it? You know, I'm gonna stick to preaching yeah. and, and everything. Okay. I'm gonna let Robert sing. So the okay. next time that we get with you, you know what yeah. I'm saying? We we wanna come, you in Connecticut, right? What yes, what sir. moved you to Connecticut? Yeah, you went from Michigan to Atlanta. What to what took you to Connecticut? Absolutely. Uh so I moved from Michigan uh to Connecticut seven years ago for a worship pastor's position uh here. And so that is kind of that's been my vocation for, for quite some time. I moved from Michigan to North Carolina um, for that same position as worship uh, pastor. Wow. And then uh, we ended up moving back to Michigan, same position there. So that's been my vocation for a number of years. Wow. Let's talk about this new single you have, because I've been asking yeah. around. I said, where is Marcus Cole? Where is Marcus Cole? And I yeah. went to your Instagram, and the Lord of God met us both there, and you responded right away. <laughs> yeah. Um, this new single is, uh, I, I'm, a, I'm a person of, I speak highly of orchestration because I believe that the father, uh, this is a part of string theory that makes the connection spiritually. I believe that the father pulls strings and, 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 and events that we can't understand. We, our finite minds couldn't even begin to understand it. 
Um, so this was strictly or orchestration. At the beginning of this, uh, this, this whole situation with this virus, um, I saw a lot of people operate in fear. I saw a lot of Christians operate out of fear. Mm -hmm. And it began to bother me um, because I know what we say we believe in, but it didn't seem like we were believing in it. And um, maybe the first month into the quarantine and all that kind of stuff, I just, um, as I often do, I just heard a melody and I started writing to it and it was simply be still and know, I am God, I am God. Yes. And I didn't know what I was gonna do with it. Robert, I think earlier when I tuned in on Facebook and was watching you, I, I think I overheard you say something about uh, funding coming for a project of yours, something to that effect. Yes, sir. Um, and you know, as well as I know, being an independent artist, it is very hard yes. to fund your projects that you have, which is why, you know, think about it, right? My song has been 14 years. Man, a phenomenal. 14 song. years. And so uh, I didn't know what I was going to do with the song, had no idea. And then one day, Spirit prompted me to reach out to a friend of mine. His name is Paul Wright. And um, I've done some compilation albums with him, wedding compilations with him. And I just reached out and said, hey, man, are you guys considering doing anything uh, in terms of music, like consolation music or whatever, hope music for um, this uh, whole situation going on? He said, yeah, we're working on it right now. And we're going to release it in August. And I said, uh, do, you, do you need any more songs? He said, send me what you have. Sure enough, I sent him Be Still and Know. And he was like, all right, let me have a meeting. He contacted me over the weekend. And he said, let's do it. And, uh, and there it is. So that's definitely the orchestration of the most high. Yes, yes. Well, how can your um, fans and followers follow you? Um, so they can always follow me on, on Facebook and Instagram, Marcus Cole Soul on Instagram. And you can find me as Marcus Cole on, on Facebook and reach out to me there. I always, I typically respond. Mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, so yeah, that's, that's the quickest way. I'm just, I'm being a husband. I'm being a father, and once again, I'm always following the music, and and I'm working on stuff right now to to be to be put out there. So I'm gonna I want I want some of the grace that you have, who whoever has come through for you, I want them to come through for me, so I can get my stuff funded and mixed and mastered, and I can get it put out there too. Yes, and, and it, it's gonna it's gonna happen. We're putting it in an mean, atmosphere today, I mean, and and you you've got to know that God is not going to fail you. You've blessed so yes. many people and so many. Um, situations when they were down, when they give up, and your song and your voice came on, God has to bless you. Okay, I'm, I'm going to jump in right now for all of our listeners that are listening in. If they wanted to cash app you money to your project right now, what's your cash app? That's awesome, man. It's uh, Soul Preacher. It's a uh, um, dollar sign for the S-O-U-L-P-R-E-C-H-A, Soul Preacher, um, on cash app. Right, so no A? Yeah, uh, no E-R. It's just P-R-E-A-C-H-A. -E so uh, soul preacher. preacher. The preacher. S is a dollar sign. Gotcha. Yes. The S is the... All right, so everybody, uh, this is the legendary uh, Marcus Cole. My God. Uh, uh, we want you to soul. Let him know that we love him, that we want to hear his great music yes. coming out. We're going to play this new song, uh, Be Still and Know by yes. Marcus Cole. And Marcus, you let us know let us how know. we can come back yes. in. And so back into yes. you, let us know from time to time. Just tap into us, Dude. and we're going to put your cash up, up yes. every time. And then we're going to yes. just see how God brings about all the resources you need in this season. Tell your children we say, yeah, daddy's a gangster. Yes. And we see it. <laughs> and, but um, he's, anointed. he's an anointed gangster. And I want anointed you to know. I, I want you to know, brother, I am one of your biggest fans. And your, I appreciate voice, it, your voice has inspired me because having a, a different texture of voice if we used to wasn't the popular thing, yeah, that's but right, now that's everybody right. want our sound. That's right. That's so you right, keep on rocking right. and pushing, and I'm gonna push behind you, man. Uh oh, Thank I see you, a, man. I see a concert coming up. Come on, come on. Let's do it. Yeah, you know, it. Now you Let's do a virtual concert. concert. There you go. No joke. I can set it up for y'all. Oh yes. All right. Yeah. Let's do it. Okay. We we'll stay okay. in touch, and I'm I'm gonna send you my information, direct information. Thank you, brother. I appreciate it so much. Now All introduce right, this so. song to the world right now. All right. So, ladies and gentlemen, um, if you haven't heard already, I want this truly to bless you because it blessed me when it came to me. This is Be Still and Know from the Hope Anthology. Right here on, on G.O.D. Radio, Radio 1. 1.